Texas University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. It's the season of goodwill, I'm told, so for no good reason, we're letting students off the hook until the new year. Instead, tonight, we're playing the first match in our annual series for alumni of some of the UK's leading universities and university colleges. Fourteen teams are competing, each comprising four former students who, since leaving, have achieved distinction in their chosen field. They have all, very sportingly, agreed to compete for nothing more than the honour of their alma mater. There is no prize on offer for whichever team wins the series beyond an excuse to look smug as they get first crack at the mince pies and Botswana's finest sherry. <laughs> Playing for Manchester University first is a five-time Paralympian in wheelchair basketball. He's also won gold medals in the Wheelchair Basketball World Championships, the European Championships, the European Champions Cup and the Commonwealth Paraplegic Games. With him, a journalist who writes for The Guardian, The Times, The Sunday Times magazine and elsewhere, he's also a familiar voice on Radio 4 and a familiar face on The Culture Show and The Review Show currently working on a film adaptation of his memoir of growing up in Luton. Their captain is Professor of Poetry at the University of Oxford and the University of Sheffield. He's won RTS, BAFTA and Ivan Novello Awards for his writing for radio, TV, film and theatre. And in 1999, he was named the UK's Millennium Poet. Their final team member is an entomologist overseeing a globally significant collection of between three and four million specimens of Diptera, Siphonaptera, Arachnida and Myriapoda. She has a special interest in medical entomology and can often be heard on Radio 4 enthusing about her subject. Let's ask them now to introduce themselves in the time-honoured way. Hello, I'm Sir Philip Craven. I got a BA Honours Degree in Geography in 1972 and now I'm the President of the International Paralympic Committee. Hello, I'm Safraz Manzor. I graduated in 1992 with a degree in economics and I'm now a writer, journalist and broadcaster. And this is their captain. Hello, I'm Simon Armitage. I got my MA in social policy in 1988 and I am a poet. Hello, my name is Eric McAllister. I graduated in 96 in environmental biology and now I manage the fleas and flies at the Natural History Museum in London. Now, St Anne's College, Oxford, was founded as an all-women's institution and became co-educational in 1979, though you wouldn't know that from the team playing tonight. <laughs> Their first member maintained she wasn't very good at lab work, so decided on a career talking about science rather than doing it. She now reports on international science research for the World Service, the Today programme and for Newsnight. With her, a historian with an enthusiasm for popularising her subject, She's written on Julian of Norwich and the private lives of Anglo-Saxon saints, and her broadcasts for BBC Four have covered the Hundred Years' War, medieval monarchy and Viking art. Their captain began her career as a physical chemist. She taught chemistry in Oxford, Cambridge and London and later chaired several health institutions. She's also an authority on solar energy and patron of the Rupert Brooke Society. Their fourth member has been a foreign correspondent for the BBC and Al Jazeera English. She's reported from Kosovo and the West Bank, from Afghanistan shortly after 9-11, from Cairo during the 2011 revolution, and in 2002 she testified in the trial of Slobodan Milosevic. Let's meet the St Anne's team. Hello, I'm Rebecca Morell. I read chemistry at St Anne's and graduated in 2001, and now I'm a science correspondent at BBC News. Hello, I'm Dr Yanina Ramirez. I read English at St Anne's from 98 to 2001 and I'm now an Oxford art historian, broadcaster and writer. And this is their captain. Hello, I'm Mary Archer. I read chemistry at St Anne's 1962 to 1966 and I'm currently chairman of the Science Museum Group. Hi, I'm Jackie Rowland. I graduated in modern languages from St Anne's in 1986 and I've been a television correspondent for 25 years. Well, the rules are the same as for the student series. Ten points for starter questions there, solo efforts answered on the buzzer, and 15 points in total for a set of bonuses. They can be answered conferring between yourselves. So, fingers on the buzzers, here's your first starter for ten. A Christmas gift to a dear child in memory of a summer day. 
These words were inscribed in the final 1864 manuscript of which story? Its origins lie in a tale first told to the three young daughters of Henry Liddell. St Anne's Ramirez. Alice in Wonderland. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, yes, or Alice's <laughs> Adventures Underground. It's correct. <laughs> so the first set of bonuses, St Anne's, are on the recipe for Delia Smith's Creole Christmas cake. Oh. <laughs> Firstly, for five points, Delia's recipe includes one and a half teaspoons of which botanically infused alcohol-based tonic first created in Venezuela in 1824? Oh, God. One of those things are liqueur. Um... Yes, but Venezuela. Venezuela. Oh, I don't know. That's a, that's Maria. Monk's. Tia Maria. Tia Maria. No, I think of Venezuela, Mexican. Cacao. Come on, let's have it. Yeah, sorry. Oh, uh, yes. Um, mm. <laughs> Come on, let's have anything, it. Anything. Absinthe. <laughs> <laughs> That's strange, is Angostura bitters is what I was no, thinking. Was... Also required in this Creole Christmas cake is half a teaspoon of which widely used aromatic spice consisting of the grated seeds of species of trees in the genus Maristica? Cinnamon or nutmeg? Nutmeg. 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 Nutmeg is right, yes. Well and finally, 250 grams are needed of which sugar taking its name from its place of origin in Guyana. Muscovado. No, it's Demerara oh. sugar. Oh, okay, I wouldn't go on Bake Off just yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, of for this, what three-letter word in the English language has more definitions than any other? Those listed in the OECD... Manchester Armitage. Set. Well done. You get a set of bonuses, Manchester, on the poet Sir Geoffrey Hill, who died in June 2016. Firstly, Hill's 1971 work, Mercy and Hymns, is a collection that combines memories of the poet's childhood in the Midlands with a celebration of which 8th century ruler? Um, it's King Offa. Correct, of Mercia. Secondly, they seem to me to be transcendently fine human beings whom one would have loved to have known. These words of Geoffrey Hill refer to Robert Southwell and which other English Jesuit executed in 1581? I don't know. No, we don't know. It's Edmund Campion. And finally, referring to fraught mind, timing and facial gesture, Hill mentioned which British comedy actor as an influence on his work. He played the lead role in a comedy series set in the first century BC. I think it's Ken Dodd. No, it's Frankie Howard in Up Pompeii. <laughs> Ten points for this. In 1902, Sir Ronald Ross received the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for his work on the causes of which infectious disease, having demonstrated the life cycle of the protozoal parasites in the Anopheles mosquito? St Anne's Morel. Malaria. Malaria is right, yes. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses on chemical elements, St Anne's. Firstly, for five, which silvery white metal with atomic number 22 was discovered by William Gregor in 1791? It is low in density, high in strength, and is named after the race of deities to which Phoebe and Hyperion belong. Are you sure? Um, 22. Hydrogen, helium, lithium, brilliant, <laughs> carbon, <laughs> nitrogen, oxygen, chlorine, chlorine, neon, magnesium, What's aluminium, titanium? silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, titanium. chlorine. I think it was titanium. I don't think so. Titanium. Correct. Oh. <laughs> well done. Useful to have a historian, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and secondly, which hard blue-grey transition metal with atomic number 73 was discovered by Anders Ekeberg in 1802? Highly resistant to corrosion, it is named after a Greek king imprisoned eternally in Tartarus. Hard blue-grey transition. Chromium. 73. It's no, it's heavier than chromium. It's it's a it's a group down. If it's named after a Greek king, I think we better have an answer here. Yeah. Manganese. No, it's tantalum. And finally, which radioactive actinide metal with atomic number 90 was discovered by the Reverend Morton S. Mark in 1828 and named after the Norse god of thunder? Thorium. Correct. Right, we're going to take a picture round now. For your picture starter, you're going to see a lesser-known verse from a popular carol. 
Ten points if you can give me the name of the carol. St Anne's Roland. Oh, come on, you faithful. Indeed it is. That's the verse that's usually sung on Christmas Day, isn't it? Your picture bonuses are three more lesser-known verses from Christmas carols. Again, five points in each case if you can give me the name of the carol. Firstly... Glorious now, behold him arise. How does that begin? We Three Kings. We Three Kings. We Three Kings is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Sing along. Here's the second one. Now to the Lord sing praises, all you... God rest you, Mary. Gentlemen. 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 Yes. <laughs> yes. And finally... Away in a manger. Yeah. Away in a manger. Oh, sure. Would you like to sing that too? <laughs> <laughs> right, ten points for this. Fingers on the buzzers. Who wrote these lines? "'Twas in the month of December and the year 1883 that a monster whale came to Dundee. Manchester Armitage. No, I'm sorry, if you buzz, you must answer straight away. It's tough, but you, if you buzz, you're shutting them out. You see, you can't confer! <laughs> One of you can buzz. Okay, when nobody's got it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> you can hear the rest of the question, that a monster whale came to Dundee. They appear in the poem, The Famous Tay Whale. Who wrote it? St Anne's Ramirez. Henry James? No, it's the I worst poet in the English language, William Topaz McGonagall. <laughs> Ten points for this. Ornamented with platinum and diamonds to resemble frost and sitting on a base designed to imitate a block of melting ice, the winter is a decorative object made by which company? Ah, it's one of 50... St Anne's Ramirez. Fabergé? Fabergé is correct, yes. <laughs> These bonuses are on winter weather, St Anne's. The severe smog that enveloped London in December 1952 led to legislation known by what name? The first of it, you don't need to buzz, you can just yeah, confer. Yeah, clean Air Act. The first of its kind in 1956 and the second 12 years later. Clean Air Act. Correct. December of which year of the 1960s saw the beginning of winter weather conditions regarded as the coldest for over 200 years? 60. The conditions persisted until the following March. 1962. Correct. And finally, in late December 2015, which city of northern England was hit by severe floods when the River Ouse York. flowed back to combine with the River Foss? York. Correct. Ten points for this. What is the defining characteristic of prose that is described as sesquipedalian? I'll tell you, it uses very long words. <laughs> Ten points for this. <laughs> How are you? You've been in Afghanistan, I perceive. These are the first words of which enduring literary character in a novel of 1886? Ah. St Anne's Archer. Sherlock Holmes. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses, St Anne's, are on an author. Born in 1883, of whom does the Faber and Faber website say... A writer with a huge output. He wrote too much, but novels like Sinister Street and entertainments like Whiskey Galore deserve to survive. Compton Mackenzie. Compton Correct. In 1923, Mackenzie co founded which magazine devoted to classical music? It shares its name with the device for the reproduction of recorded sound. The gramophone. The gramophone. Correct. And finally, Mackenzie died in 1972 and was buried on which island in the south of the Outer Hebrides? Its main settlement is Castle Bay. No. One of those other things. No, I don't know. Uig or something. Do you know? Go with that. Come on. We don't know. Um, it's Barra. Ten points for this. Okay. In October 2016, a general election in which country saw the Independence Party win the largest number of seats, with the Pirate Party in third place? St Anne's Roland. Norway. No, you lose five points, with the Pirate Party in third place. It also became the European country with the highest proportion of female parliamentarians ahead of Finland and Sweden. You may not confer. You can buzz one of you. Manchester Mansour. Is it Austria? No, it was Iceland. Right, ten points for this. Cotton wool consists almost entirely of what carbohydrate substance? Ah. It is... St Anne's Archer. 
cellulose. Correct. Your bonus systems are on birds which migrate to Britain in winter. I want you to identify each bird from its description. Firstly, Calidris canutus, a short, stocky wading bird. It shares its common four-letter name with the unit of speed. That's not a unit of speed. Canutus, but that's your unit of speed. A unit of speed. Swift. No, that's not four. <laughs> no, it's a knot, knot. K and O T. Uh, okay. Five points for this. Secondly, Cygnus columbianus, a relatively small water bird compared with other members of its genus. Its two word name refers to a British naturalist noted for his wood engravings and the use of white line printing. Cucumber. It's not a cleric. Um, swan or something. Somebody's swan. Somebody's some, something Somebody's swan. Somebody's swan. It's got to be swan, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Which um, are the swans that. Migrate. There's a Beric swan, I think. Beric a Beric swan. swan. That's a Buick swan. Oh, oh close. Yeah, and miss. finally, <laughs> Bucephala clangula, a diving duck that shares its name with the Jamaican residence of the writer Ian Fleming. Oh, gosh, what's the Jamaican residence of Ian Fleming? Ah. Oh. oh, gosh. What's the, what's the, what's the, the Jamaican, um, the Ian Fleming novel that's set in? Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Jamaica Inn. Mm -hmm. In Jamaica Inn. No, that's, 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 that's the house, isn't it? Oh. Yeah. I don't know. I can't think. Let's have yes. it, please. Guess. I don't know. It's a bird, I don't know. D diving <laughs> duck. <I> don't <laughs> <know>. <laughs> a something <laughs> swan. Have we done that? No, it's a golden eye. Oh, oh, okay. Ten points for this music starter. For your music starter, you're going to hear an excerpt from a piece of classical music. Ten points if you can tell me the name of the composer. St Anne's Roland. Vivaldi. It is Vivaldi. It's winter from the Four Seasons. <laughs> Your bonuses are three more pieces of classical music, each one evoking the sense of a phenomenon, object or activity that one might encounter in winter. That's what I want you to identify. Firstly, what phenomenon is named in the title of this piece? Ice Maiden. No, it's snow. That was oh, Debussy's The Snow is Dancing. Secondly, what activity is the composer evoking here? Walsing. That's a walsing. Is it Okay, yeah. Ice skating. That's correct, yes. Val Teufel's The Skater's Waltz. And finally, what object is named in the title of the suite of 12 pieces from which this is taken? No, it's a Christmas tree. That was from Liss Christmas Tree Suite. Manchester, there's still plenty of time for you to catch up. Ten points at stake for this. Published posthumously in 1955, A Child's Christmas in Wales is a prose recollection by which... St Anne's Rowland. Dylan Thomas. Correct. <laughs> St Anne's, you get three questions on the author Jenny Diskey, who died in 2016. At the age of 15, Jenny Diskey was unofficially adopted by which future Nobel laureate whose works include The Golden Notebook? Oh, Doris Lessing. Doris Lessing? Correct. Charlotte, the protagonist of Diskey's novel Monkey's Uncle, is a supposed descendant of which naval officer and meteorologist associated with Charles Darwin? Naval officer. Yeah. Who, who, who was captain of the Beagle? That's one thing. Um, no, I don't know. John, John, someone. <laughs> John Smith. No, it's Fitzroy. That's the uh, person you were looking for. And finally, Disky's 2008 novel, Apology for the Woman Writing, 
features Marie de Gournay, the amanuensis of which French essayist, born in 1533? Essays. Diderot. No, it's Montaigne. Earlier than that. Ten points for this. Written by Lin Manuel Miranda, which hip hop musical won 11 prizes? Manchester Manzor. Hamilton. Hamilton is correct, yes. Well right, Manchester, these are your bonuses. They're on ski resorts. In each case, name the country where all three resorts are located. First, Mezica, Kranskagora and Strasebled. Austria, I don't know, I was going to say Russia, but uh, Kranskagora. Go on, then. Austria. No, it's Slovenia. Secondly, in which country are Narkanda, Mundali and Yumthang Valley? Japan. 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 No, they're in India. And the ski resorts Kinusu Ridge, Lake Louise and Kicking Horse Mountain are in which country? Is that Canada? Yeah. Canada. Canada. Correct. No need to buzz. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even given the question yet. Here it comes. Ten points for this. 2016 is the 500th anniversary of which literary work first published in Latin in the Low Countries? Its title is from the Greek for no place, but it's also a pun on an almost identical word meaning a good place. St. Anne's Ramirez. Oh, Utopia? Correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on the 2016 Golden Raspberry Film Awards. <laughs> Firstly, for five points, a nominee for worst screen combo was Johnny Depp and his glued-on moustache for his role as a roguish art dealer in which 2015 film? 2015, Johnny Depp, roguish art dealer. Oh, no, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Any Johnny Depp film. I have no idea. It got panned. Um, Johnny Depp, I don't know. any of his. We don't know. It was Mortigai. And secondly, which 2015 sci-fi film achieved six nominations, out of which Eddie Redmayne won as Worst Supporting Actor? Sci-fi. Sci-fi. Sci 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 it was a sci-fi film. Yeah. Eddie Redmayne. Any idea? 20, whatever. We haven't been to the cinema recently, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's Jupiter Ascending. And finally, who won the Worst Actress Award for her role in Fifty Shades of Grey? She's the daughter of Melanie Griffiths. Dakota, 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 Fanning. Dakota, Dakota Fanning. No, it's Dakota Johnson. Dakota oh, Fanning, oh, something else, I think. Right, ten points for this picture starter question. You're going to see a statue of a ruler. Ten points if you can give me his name. St. Anne's Ramirez. Emperor Hadrian. No, anyone uh, like to buzz from Manchester? Nero. Manchester Craven. Nero. No, it's the Emperor Augustus. So, picture bonuses in a moment or two. Another starter question in the meantime. Fingers on the buzzers. In a song of 1971, whom did David Bowie call a strange young man with a voice like sand and glue? In October... Manchester Mansour. Aladdin Sane? No. You lose five points, I'm afraid. In October 2016, he became a Nobel laureate. Oh... Yes, ah. St Anne's Rowland. Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan is correct. Oh, so you're going to get the picture bonuses than St Anne's, and they follow on from that picture of the Emperor Augustus, who, according to Luke's Gospel, ordered the census that brought Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem. For your picture bonuses, three more statues of rulers who ordered a significant historical census or survey during their reign. Five points for each you can name. Firstly, who's this biblical figure? King David. Yes, yes, he's got a heart. David, King David. It is King David who ordered a census of Israel and Judah, according to the book of Samuel. Secondly, name this Spanish monarch. Uh, Philip. Uh, Philip. Do you want Which a... one? Philip Fourth. No, it's Philip II. Oh, I know. He ordered a survey of the Spanish territories in the Americas. And finally, name this King of England. Gosh, who's that 
Let's try out. Let's try Alfred the Great. Try Alfred the Great. Alfred the Great. No, it's William the Conqueror who ordered the Doomsday Book, of course. Oh. Right, ten points of this, about three minutes to go. <laughs> what bird of prey links the Cambridge pub in which Crick and Watson announced their discovery? St Anne's Archer. Eagle. The eagle is correct, eagle. yes. <laughs> These bonuses are on astronomy, St Anne's. What astronomical event visible from Britain occurred on the 9th of May 2016? The next two such events will take place in 2019 and 2032. Transit of Mercury. Yeah. Transit of Mercury. Correct. Which English astronomer observed a transit of Mercury in October 1677 during an expedition to the island of St Helena to catalogue the stars of the Southern Hemisphere? 16. 16. Um, 16. I can't remember his name. Not, um, I, know, I just can't remember the name. Observatory. We better have an answer. It's not Herschel, because that's much too late. Sorry. It's Edmund Hawley. And finally, Mercury Bay, so-called because Captain Cook observed a transit of Mercury from the region in 1769, lies off the coast of the Coromandel Peninsula in the north of which country? Coromandel. New Zealand. New Zealand. Correct. Ten points for this. Before Theresa May in July 2016, who was the last Prime Minister to have previously held the office of Home Secretary, doing so from 1967 to 1970? Manchester Manzor. James Callaghan. Correct. <laughs> Here are your bonuses. They're on Kingston-upon-Hull, the UK city of culture, in 2017. Firstly, in 2017, the Ferens Art Gallery in Hull will host... Which annual event inaugurated in 1984? Turner Prize. Correct. Which actor was born in Hull in 1937? He first came to prominence in the 1960s in films such as Billy Lyre and Dr Zhivago and was nominated for an Academy Award for his performance in The Dresser. Tom Courtney. Correct. Which independent theatre was founded in Hull in 1971 and became particularly associated with the plays of John Godfer? Hull Truck. Correct. Ten points for this. In December 2012, Wild Oats 11 set a record time of 42 hours and 23 minutes in an annual yacht race from Sydney to which city, the capital of Tasmania? Manchester Armitage. Hobart. Hobart is correct, yes. <laughs> and at the dawn, Manchester have 55, St Anne's College, Oxford have 185. Well, you started coming back at the end there. Honour is satisfied, I think. Just about. Uh, congratulations to you, Manchester. Thank you very much for joining us. And many congratulations to you, St Anne's, for a terrific performance. Uh, and thank you all for doing something you didn't need to do. Thank you very much. <laughs> so until next time, when we'll have another first-round match, it's goodbye from Manchester University. Uh, goodbye. Bye. <laughs> it's goodbye from St Anne's College, Oxford. Bye. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.